Hello, how the tech are you? I don't have anything funny to say today, I guess. Uh, but this is our weekly tech show on Echoplex Media. Um, we did not abort. That That's the good one. We did not abort today. It was tempting, but we decided to actually go ahead with this mission. And it'll make a lot more sense later on when I talk about my seg segments. But uh, I am historian Matt. Um... I'm a lazy good for nothing in Florida, so I just talk about uh, whatever I feel like talking about on this show. Mostly science and, and technology news. Um, occasionally, I, I do a deep dive into something fun, and but uh, today I have a, a little bit of science, a little bit of technology. Um, I do topics for today are uh, computers are going after our hobbies now. And you probably know what I'm talking about, but I'll, I'll go into that in more detail. And the second one is NASA scrubs a second attempt at launching Artemis 1 as of the recording of this segment. And we don't know, or recording of this show, um, may, have, uh, may have gone off or got scrubbed again by the time you actually see it. So you with the pink mic. I am HK Perrin, and I'm a software engineer, so I cover mostly development news. Uh, and this week's story is uh, very near and dear to me, and it definitely has something to do with software engineering. It's a program that I wrote. Uh, it is called Nephily Serve, and I will tell you all about it uh, during my segment. So I want to shoot it back over to Matt to begin, because Dave is off this week. So go ahead, Matt. Right. Dave is not with us in person, but he is with us in spirit today. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. But, uh, so let me go on my first topic. So computers are going after our hobbies now. What am I talking about? Well, just this past week, an AI program wins a state fair art contest. If you're not uh, aware of this, there are AI programs out now that you can just enter in some text. I think we've covered this before in the show, but you just enter in some text and the program will spit out an image based on your text. And they're getting really good and they look really great. And somebody has uh, used it to win a, an art contest. That somebody is Jason Allen. He entered a AI-generated AI artwork into the Colorado State Fair fine arts competition and he ended up winning first place in the digital arts and or digitally manipulated photo photography category so this is not like regular fine arts like oil painting or uh acrylic painting or any of the painting sections it's, it was specifically a category for digital arts but he used ai to generate the image specifically he used uh one called mid journey uh, I th I've heard of it before. I haven't played around with it. I'll have a link in the show notes and, uh, I want to explore it a little further, but, um, he used mid journey to create a series of images, uh, from which he picked a few to enter into the contest. He then upscaled the images, printed them on camp on canvas and submitted them to the competition. So usually when you use one of these AI programs, it'll spit out a number of images that try to match what you uh, you typed in many of them usually are not great but the, if you look around you can usually find a, a couple of them that are pretty good and uh, you pick from there and that's basically what he did but he also went through and he, it wasn't just he entered some text and picked from just those images he also tried all sorts of different types of text and stuff and apparently went through quite a number of them before he settled on the few images that he entered in the contest and specifically he didn't enter just one. He entered multiple images of that. He thought were the best that he did upscale and, and print to canvas, but only one of those images won the whole show. So, um, this victory is opening questions about what it means to be an artist. Now that computers can do most of the work. And let's see. So we got some questions like, does entering text in for a computer to interpret count as being an artist? I don't know. What do you, uh, what do you think? HK. I would say that no, uh, that doesn't count as being an artist. Uh, but 
it's a very soft no from me. I could certainly be swayed if someone were to give me a good argument. Yeah. Uh, that's just my gut feeling. And, you know, gut feeling is as good as almost no evidence. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm leaning towards, yes, it's technically being an artist and, and creating art. It does. If you played around with those image generators before, and I know you have, <laughs> It, it's kind of an art to figure out the best way to enter in text so you get the images that you want. Uh, some of the ones, I haven't played with anyone like Mid Journey, which is like really top tier art making kind of stuff. I used the, the smaller, what was called Dolly Mini. I think it's like Crayon now or something mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't, that's fun. Everybody can use it. Yeah, everybody has access to it, but doesn't make great images uh, most of the time. And uh, it, it's definitely, you know, to get what you want, you, it, it takes some work and you may not get it at all. <laughs> um, so, and that's, and there's a lot of similarities there between that and, and artists or different types of artists. You don't have the skill of actually making the image though, but uh, um, it is something. But I think, and I kind of cover this in a, I have this as like a second question in here. But uh, I don't think they should be entered in the same contests that people who are generating the images themselves, like completely themselves from. So like if somebody's yep. doing digital art and they're hand painting it onto the, you know, in the computer using Photoshop or something, that is a very different kind of art than typing in text to generate images. And I don't think they should compete. Uh, part of the issue with this uh, particular incident with... Uh, with Jason Allen here is he entered the, his generated art into this digital art competition, but didn't actually notify the judges. That's what he was doing. So there's a big question of whether or not he should keep his, uh, you know, award or what, what should happen? Maybe a new category um, needs to be made in the future. I don't know. Was it against the rules? I mean, the rules just don't cover it. I mean, it's not, it's one of the things, it's not specifically in the rules, right? Yeah. They used a computer to make the art, but they didn't say like how you could do it. Yeah, I would say if it's not in the rules, then he wasn't breaking a rule and he should keep his, his prize. Right. But I do think that definitely they should separate out that into a different category. Right. Uh, yeah. And maybe, you know, next time, just have that as its own category, you know, AI generated images or computer generated images where you didn't do the work of actually creating the image. A computer did that work, but you used the tool of the computer to have it create the image that you wanted. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, let me scan really. I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to, uh, cover i did want to mention though that some very similar debates came out when the invention of the camera first appeared um so there's a similar debate of like what what are going to happen to painters you know representative painters when the camera was invented and obviously we've had many years to to live with that and uh, even the invention of color photography uh, made a difference, but you know, photography became its own art form and we painters went and did other stuff, maybe more abstract things that became more popular, but still there's representative painters out there. And uh, there's been mixes where people use photography to enhance their painting or, or as a basis for their painting. That's something I do all the time. Uh, and yeah, so yeah, I you think know, something just similar is going to happen. Just based on what we've talked about here, I think I'm actually leaning towards it being counted as as an art form. Yeah, uh, I would say it's you know a, a totally different art form than actually painting yourself, obviously. Right. Uh, but yeah, I could consider like you know crafting the perfect prompt to give to the computer a skill that could rise to the the moniker of art form. Yeah. Cool. 
that's all I got. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to my next topic. It's a little more straightforward. This one is NASA scrubs the second attempt at launching the Artemis. Because we had a bit of a gap in our shows, we missed the first launch, but um, second or first launch attempt it did not actually <laughs> launch. Uh, so this was the second attempt. It was supposed to be on Saturday and was canceled due to a hydrogen leak. It's kind of a bad thing that uh, um, you definitely don't want your hydrogen leaking all over the place. Not going to work. But uh, so that was on Saturday. Monday's launch attempt, we we're actually recording on Monday. So uh, it was actually scrubbed before Monday started like on Sunday because so many problems came up with the, uh, uh, with the spacecraft that they uh, decided to just preemptively scrub it and not do it. So the last chance they have to launch it will be Tuesday. You will uh, probably know by the time this show comes out whether or not it actually launched. But if Artemis does not launch on Tuesday, it will have to be rolled back to the vehicle assembly building for remedial work. And that will probably mean at least a month delay before they can launch it again. And that would not be good. So what is Artemis? Artemis mission is to launch the Orion spacecraft into orbital uh, mission around the moon and return. So Artemis is the rocket, the big rocket is going to send it there and on its path to orbit the moon. And the Orion is the actual, you know, capsule that will orbit the moon. The idea is this is a, uh, this is going to be an uncrewed mission but it is a test for future crewed missions. So it's good that uh, they're getting working out all the problems now. We definitely don't want anything bad to happen when we have people actually in the spacecraft. But uh, this is not a good sign if NASA can't get this one off the, the ground, literally. Uh, but if, if NASA can work out problems and get Artemis back on track for moon missions, a new crewed mission to the moon will be the first one in 50 years, I think. Uh, it wasn't actually in the article. I have to, <laughs> I think that was from other information that I got and didn't look it up, but I think it was 50 years. Uh, I think it's, let's see, it was 69 when we first had a crewed yeah. mission. And then I think the last one wasn't it like 72 or 73? Sounds about right. And that will be about so 50 yeah, years. We're, we're coming up on 50 years. Either we've passed it already or we're coming up on 50 years yeah. without a mission to the moon. Uh, yeah. A manned mission to the moon. But yeah. Which is crazy. Uh, but, but then again, what happened in, in between is NASA started concentrating on sending basically probes, but, uh, you know, uncrewed missions to all over the place, all over our solar system. Uh, they've been pretty successful, but by not putting people on it, they've been a lot cheaper than if they <laughs> tried to send people all, all over the place as people expected. But, uh, it seems like there's a new space race, new race to the moon. And this mission Artemis, the plan is to send people back to the moon and eventually actually set up uh, a moon base, which will be a, you know, jump off point for getting all the way to Mars. It would be so cool to see like the, like videos and photos of people walking around on the moon with modern technology. Yeah. Cause you know, the, well, even the, what we had up on the moon, um, uh, it can be like remastered and you know, we have a lot of the film. I think we have most of the original film, but not all of it. I think a lot of it was lost. Yeah. Uh, but I, uh, you know, I've, I've seen some pictures of like really high def scans of that stuff that's been like remastered and yeah, it is so cool. The, like even that level of detail and that was like sixties technology. It would be yeah. amazing to see modern technology, like the, the videos and photos of modern technology on the moon. 
Well, I've just been seeing, looking at uh, photos and videos of the Artemis spacecraft on the ground, you know, on, on the, the launch pad. And just with modern technology for on Earth, like it is really amazing <laughs> what it looks like now. Uh, I was very surprised, you know, really high end, like 4K video <laughs> makes a big difference. Yeah. And especially if we had like 360 video, 360 4K video of like something driving around the moon and you can just like yeah. sit in your VR headset and like look around and it's like, it would be so cool. Like really being on the moon. Yeah. 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 I think the other, uh, there's a, the question now is, uh, besides, you know, if Artemis will get off the ground, uh, but if they, it doesn't, you know, companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin are also trying to get, get, create, uh, rockets that will make it to the moon. Um, and there's just a question of whether or not NASA will be directly doing it or funding these other companies to uh, go to the moon. Um, the Artemis mission, even though it's reusing a lot of parts from the shuttle, uh, it is still like, you know, it costs billions of dollars. And I think each launch is going to be like a billion dollars. You know, and most of the stuff that's sent up will not be reused. Um, so, and Elon Musk, even though he's, at, and SpaceX, even though they have not made it to the moon, they have made it in the orbit and uh, in the space. But he seems to think that he can do it for like a hundred million dollars or something, <laughs> quite a bit less per launch, and their entire system is reusable, supposedly. Um, I mean, you can you can get to the moon for cheaper. You can get a human being to the moon for cheaper, but uh, would it be as safe? Is would yeah. be my question. Pro well, initially, probably not. Like you can, you can get a, the remains of a human being to the moon <laughs> for like very cheap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If safety is of no concern at all, you can get someone to the moon pretty easily. Yeah. <laughs> pretty cheaply, I should say. But yeah. Uh, That's all I got. I'm very excited about the potential of, of crude moon missions again in the near future. Yeah. Be a... Uh... Should be an interesting time for space tech and science in the next, uh, even in just the next few years. Yep. Yeah. Just the, uh, like having, like I was saying, having like, you know, a person up there with a 360 camera walking around would be so cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So, uh, moving on to mine, uh, I'm going to talk about something that I have been working on for a while. Uh, and I have now gotten it to the point where you can actually run it on your own server. Uh, if you have a home server or if you use Linux at home, uh, you can run this and spin up a web dev server with your local files very easily. Uh, it is called Nephily Serve. And what it is is... Uh, it's an NPM package, so you install it with the Node Package Manager, which is available on every platform, every Linux platform. Uh, and you just do sudo nephily serve dot, and that will serve the current directory, and you can log in with any regular user, so like a your own user account with your own login password. Uh, you can also have it serve the home directories of users. So whichever user logs in, they'll see just the contents of their own home directory. Or you can serve user directories, which whatever folder you give it, whatever directory you give it, it will create a directory for every user that logs in, and they'll get to see that directory. Uh, you can run it without having to install it. Uh, you can run it as an unprivileged user. And just like I do on my own home server, you can run it as a uh, cluster of worker processes using PM2. So in that sense, it works a lot like uh, the Apache uh, worker process model. Uh, so you can you can serve, you know, multiple requests, many many requests from many many users at the same time. 
Uh, and you can have PM2 started up as soon as the system starts. So in this sense, uh, you can essentially just create a web dev server, like a dedicated web dev server. If you have, say, like a, uh, you have a, a NAS system set up in your, in your home, you can use this to create a web dev server on it uh, and just log in with a regular system user. And you can create new system users and log in with, uh, with those users uh, if you want to give more people access to it. Uh, and the, the real nice thing about using this is every system, Mac, Windows, and Linux, all have uh, Linux, including GNOME and KDE, all have web dev clients built into them. So you can connect to this server using any modern operating system. Uh, and you can bring up this server very easily. Uh, like I was saying, you can have it come up at system boot. And I currently use this on my, uh, my server at home here. I have a, a 12 terabyte RAID array, uh, and I use it to back up all of my computers to. So every single computer I have just automatically backs up to that RAID array using this web dev server. Uh, so I've worked for quite a while on it. I read the entire web dev spec uh, and I implemented the web dev spec in Node.js. And now that I'm done with that, you can use this for free. It is open source. It is free. Uh, download it today. Nice. So, uh, Matt, did you have any questions about that? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I should have <laughs> a bunch of questions. You've been talking about it for a while, but... Um... Uh, what made you uh, decide to to make this and open source it? So that's an interesting story. Uh, I'm working on an email app called Port 87, and that app is going to have a contacts manager. And the way your phone, if you have an iPhone, uh, and it'll also work on Android, your, the way your phone manages contacts is over a protocol call, called card dav and card dav is an extension of web dav so i made this in order to ultimately include card dav in it uh, but i had to make web dav first and then i can make card dav on top of it and after i made the web dav part i was like this is actually incredibly useful on its own so i'm just going to turn it into its own server uh, just so you can manage your local files and then I'll work on the card dev part. So yeah, eventually this will support card dev as well. Uh, it'll support a few different RFCs. Uh, one of the RFCs that it will eventually support as well is called CalDAV. Uh, and that is another one for managing, uh, managing your calendar. Uh, so it'll, It'll eventually support CardDAV and CalDAV, uh, as well as a few other RFCs that just give it extra functionality. Cool. And it's open source, so other people who uh, want to extend it with other stuff can, can add stuff onto it. Yep, it's open source. It's hosted on GitHub. You can go and check out the source code. Uh, you can build your own version of it, package it, push it up to NPM on your own. Yep. Yeah. And it's uh you you have a link to it in the uh, show notes, right? Yes, I will link yeah. to it in the show notes. Excellent. Down there in the description. Cool. Yeah, I don't think I have any use for it right now, but um, yeah, it sounds cool. Yeah. Don't know what else to say. Uh, well, I think if uh, if that's it, then we can close out the show. Sounds good. Do you want to do it? Oh, looks like I'm doing it. <laughs> I've been uh, chosen. That's okay. I, I should do the outro for the for this show. So let's see. Uh, thanks for joining us, and I hope you liked our show and learned something today. Uh, we try to get this show out every week. We haven't been doing a great job of it recently, but hopefully that will uh, smooth out and we'll get some uh, get into a, a nice regular schedule. 
But uh, look out for our show. How the tech are you in the future? So let's see, check out our uh, website, echoplexmedia.com. So that's for the uh, Echoplex Media, the uh, podcast network that we're on. Uh, you can find all the other podcast shows on there, links to those. And um, if you're, you like live stuff, most of the other shows actually go out live. You can find that on twitch.tv slash echoplexmedia. And of course, you can give us money. We like money on Patreon.com. So it's uh, Patreon.com slash Echoplex. No media at the end, just to be confusing. <laughs> and uh, for radio, we have Eplex.xyz or Echoplexmedia.com slash radio. You can find us on Twitter at Eplexm. Another, yet another uh, version of our name. And then finally, we got a new swag uh, website. That, and the uh, URL is eplex.store. I have a bunch of great shirts. And I want to mention that uh, I just got my shirts today. I got my swag today. So I'm happy. I'm going to go try them on. Didn't have time to wear one for the show. But uh, yeah, thanks everybody, have a good one.